what we're going to cover off today, just a quick overview of who we are, uh, and then we're going to jump right in and, and actually have a look at the software and how it works. And uh, then we'll do uh, a little introduction to, to the Banyan folk directly and, um, and basically uh, answer any questions you have. All right. Now, very quickly about InsightWorks. Uh, you know, you, you likely know who we are, but we've been around for a little over 10 years now. And we work primarily in manufacturing and, and distribution. We're based out here in Western Canada, but we do work globally. And we typically work through our reseller channel. So if your existing Business Central uh, reseller partner or consultant is one of our resellers, then they'll be able to help you with pricing and all those sorts of things. You can check out our website to, uh, to see if your partner is one of our, our uh, partners as well. All right, so that's very briefly who we are. Uh, this is kind of what we do. So really anything, you know, end to end from manufacturing, distribution, sales, all that, anywhere where you need that kind of more advanced functionality within Business Central, that's where we come in. So today, obviously, we're going to be talking about shipping and dynamic ship and, and LTL, but we have a lot of other solutions out there. One of the related ones is this Warehouse Insight, which allows us to also do LTL packaging and things like that from the WMS solution from handheld devices. Okay. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the, the free products, but we also have, if you're on Business Central Cloud, a number of these applications are no cost. You can go in there, install them. There's no registration or anything required, and you can start using them. So if you're interested in shipping, things like Ordership Express, you know, the app is free. You can go out, you can use it to get shipping labels, all of those sorts of things, you know, things like the barcode generator or WMS Express for warehousing. All that kind of stuff you can get at no cost so feel free to check out our website it has a lot of details on those applications all right but what we're really here to talk about is dynamic ship so what is dynamic ship it allows you within business central to do packaging rate shopping labeling tracking all of those sorts of things for your shipping now typically or historically it's been used for you know parcel shipments right we go out ups fedex those kinds of guys to do your small parcel shipments and we've got a lot of carriers that, that we cover and you can do rate shopping and you know generate your shipping labels and do tracking pages and all those sorts of fun stuff what we're talking about today is more the ltl side if you have to ship freight how are you going to do that well you know historically what do you do you use a 3pl you use your phone and phone up people and find out what the rates are and book it all manually and everything else that's a real pain so what we're doing now in dynamic ship and we've had this out for quite a you know for over a year now and we've got a number of people using this already so it's not brand new it's been tested out there in, in the real world uh, but what we're doing now is you know we're we're tying it into the ltl carriers and rate shopping through the banyan interface so what does that mean we've got you know roughly 300 ltl carriers we can use and within those carriers we can rate shop across the various carriers we can generate labels and bill of ladings. So the bills are bills of lading. So the bills of lading, I mean, you can do that in, in standard dynamic ship as well. With the LTL integration, we can actually go out and grab the carrier bill of lading as well as generating one from within Business Central as well. Um, all the same sorts of things that we have available for, you know, the configurable freight markups and all those sorts of things that, um, you know, you're used to where we can, you know, mark up the freight cost or give discounts or, or all those sorts of things are available as well. And then the final one here is what I mentioned earlier, you know, works with Warehouse Insight. So this is pretty typical when we're talking about LTL. We can go in there and, you know, if you're building up a pallet while you're picking or while you're, you know, staging the product for shipping, you want to be mobile. You want to be able to scan, hey, I put this case on this pallet or this lot number or serial number on this pallet or in this box. I want to be mobile and for that you know warehouse insight can be used you use a handheld device and all that information automatically feeds into dynamic ship to do that rate shopping and everything else okay so i'll maybe show you a little bit of that in, in the demo as we go all right so let's talk about that carrier integration real quick so all the ltl carriers uh we access through banyan technology so what does that mean <clears throat> we go in and we call the the banyan uh platform and we say, hey, give us some rates for this particular shipment. So in Dynamic Ship, you define that, and we say, give me the rates, and, and it comes back. Now, the carriers that we get the rates from, you work with Banyan directly. So when you sign up with Banyan, they'll help you get onboarded. They'll figure out what carriers you have. They'll set all of that kind of stuff up, 
and that's what we're going to get the rates from. And they've got a lot of cool services. You'll you'll hear from them at the end of the session about what they can do for you. And um, uh, on on their platform that's now available to you in Business Central. So you've got one place to go to their dynamic ship in Business Central for your parcel and LTL shipping. And ideally, you'll never have to pick up a phone to talk to your carrier again. Okay. Um, one last note on this, and I've got it again, but the connector, so what we call the freight integration provider. So what we plug into Dynamic Ship to get these LTL rates, there's no cost for that connector. All you need is your Dynamic Ship license and the freight integration provider for Banyan is free. There is some implementation time associated with that, but the actual connector, the actual app is no cost to you. All right, so that's a pretty simple overview of, um, of what we've got, and I know you'll have questions. Again, feel free to enter those in the question box. But let's just now jump right in and actually have a look at how this, this thing works. So if you've seen Dynamic Ship before, that's really what we're going to cover today. And there's a bunch of ways you can use Dynamic Ship. We've got a few different options here. You know, order packaging to get a, your list of orders that need to go out today that you can launch and, and you know um, choose the order that you want to work on or what's more typically used is the package worksheet because that's where I'm actually going to you know, do my packaging or review the packaging that might have, might have been performed on the handheld device. And typically where I'm gonna do my rating and labeling and everything else is done from this package worksheet. Now, one quick note on this, when I go into this order packaging, it gives me a list of all my sales orders, warehouse shipments, transfer orders, all of those sorts of things, all of the things that I could potentially uh, ship. Now, the way this works is we're built into Business Central. We're using the standard Business Central capabilities. So if you have warehouse shipments enabled in your environment because you want to combine multiple sales orders on a single truck or you know you want to split up a sales order in multiple shipments from different locations, those sorts of things, you would use the warehouse shipment. That's standard Business Central capability. And when we're picking for something like a warehouse shipment, again, we're using the Business Central picking capability to go out, pick that product, and make it available for shipping. Now we have a lot of tools to support picking, you know, the warehouse management side, we've got order fulfillment worksheet, a number of tools like that, that can be used to help support these behaviors. But really you're just using the standard business central capabilities, right? So in this case, it's a warehouse shipment and we know where we're shipping and if it's labeled and you know, all of that kind of stuff and, and ready to go. So what I'll do, backing up a bit i'm going to go into my my package worksheet i could launch that from from the previous screen but this is where a lot of people will work because i'm at a packaging station or i'm at the shipping station and i'm coming in and i'm going to you know bring up an order and try and uh, get that order out the door so there's a few different options from the last screen the order packaging screen i could have just launched you know chosen the order that i want to ship from there based on whatever criteria maybe carrier or destination address or shipment date or whatever I want to do, I can choose the order I want to work on. But in a lot of cases, you know, somebody's dropped off a pick ticket at my my desk and said, yeah, we've we've palletized all this, so this is ready to go, you know, ship it out. Great. So what I'm going to do is using a little handheld barcode scanner I've got at my desk here, I'm going to start scanning things. And the first thing I'm going to scan is the, the barcode on the order that I want to ship. So I scan that and it's going to bring up like whether I scan the pick ticket of the order, it's going to bring up everything I need to ship on this particular order. So these are the different products I need to get out the door. Over here, it tells me how I'm supposed to ship it. So you'll notice no carrier has been specified yet. That means I get to do best way. This is basically the same as saying best way. And I'm going to go out and rate shop this and figure out which carrier is going to be the best to use for this particular shipment. And we've got some other details, you know, um, you know, where I'm shipping it to, all of that kind of stuff is in there. So next step is it's telling me to scan a package to pack. This is a packaging worksheet. So this is my packaging interface where I can now start defining, you know, the boxes or pallets that I'm going to be use, uh, using to package these, these items up. And the easiest way to do that is I scan a command. So basically you have a cheat sheet of barcodes at, at the packaging station that have things like your standard packaging sizes or your standard pallet sizes, things like that. I'm gonna scan a barcode to indicate to the system what type of pallet or box I'm using. And in this case, I've just got a generic one called pallet. And what it does, it says, here's a pallet, you know, the, the base weight, the tear weight is 10 pounds and it's 36 by 36 by 36. I can adjust these dimensions as I see fit. You know, after I've done the packaging, I can throw it on a scale or manually enter the weight or whatever I like. 
So this is sort of my default starting point. And we can actually have it calculate the weight as I'm packaging the items as well, if you want, right? Uh, most people throw it on scale, but I can have it calculate the weight based on what I'm packaging. And now I'm gonna tell the system what's actually going on this order. And the way I do that, ideally, is I scan the items that are going onto this particular pallet. Now, if you don't have barcodes on your items, that's okay. You don't have to. You can just say, hey, I've got three pallets. These are the dimensions and the weights. Give me my rates without scanning a single item or telling the system which items are on which pallet or anything else. The beauty of this, though, being able to scan these items, it gives you that physical verification that you're actually putting the right items on that order. Right? You know, this is a lamp. Maybe I've got two lamps sitting side by side. I grab one, throw it on the pallet, and I was supposed to ship the other one. By scanning those items, I'm verifying that I'm actually shipping the right items. So you eliminate all those missed ships, the customer returns, unhappiness, all that kind of stuff. But again, you don't have to scan the items if you don't want. But in my case, I'm going to scan it. And the way I've got it set up is I actually enter the quantity that I'm packing uh, as I scan. You can also have it set up so that every time I scan, it just packages one of these things and I'm good. But what this is telling me is I've got one of these packaged on this particular pallet here. And, and we're good to go. So then I'm gonna scan, uh, you know, maybe this next guy here, and we pack five of those. And let's say that that's now full, right? I've got nothing nothing left to pack on that. So I'm gonna go in and scan, uh, start another pallet, and then I'm gonna pack, you know, the remaining items. So let's do uh, this guy here, and we're gonna pack five of those on that. And we're gonna do another one of these guys, and we're gonna pack five on there. Now we're good. Now we're all packaged up. We've got two pallets ready to go. We know the total weights uh, of those pallets and, and total and everything else. And we now need to get our bill of lading and, and everything else. Now, there's some other things we can do. I can go in there and, um, you know, set up some, some options. Maybe we need, you know, Saturday delivery or pallet jack or something like that. So I can actually go in there uh, and set all of those types of things. So all the accessorials and, and other options that might be required to get this out the door. So things like lift gate pickup or residential, all of these sorts of things I can set up. There's a ton of options. We made them all visible here just for, for the sake of this demo, but you know, most people probably don't care about New York Metro delivery, but you know, all of these different types of options that we can do uh, to to get an accurate rate back, right? If we need a lift gate or if it is going to a trade show or whatever, you know, we've got that information in the system. We pass that to the carriers and they'll use that to do the rating, all right? So I'm not going to set any of these, but there's a whole bunch of stuff. And the other thing here, this the schedule pickup, that can also affect the rate. You know, if I need next day pickup, that might be more expensive than if my pickup is, is a week from now. And we also use this to actually send in the request to schedule that pickup with the carrier, right? So once I've got the rating and I've chosen a carrier, I can say, okay, you know, schedule that pickup and ideally they're gonna be here at that time and then we can specify, you know, the dock that they have to come to and all that. And again, that goes right to the carrier, right? They get all that information uh, electronically. So all of the things that you'd normally have to fill out on a piece of paper or a website or on the phone, it's all here in Business Central. And all of those options, by the way, that I just showed you, that I was doing that here at, at point of shipment, but I can have that uh, as a uh, template associated with the customer. So the defaults by customer. So every time I ship to this customer, these are the things I care about. Or every time I ship to that customer with this carrier, these are the things I care about. So you can set all of that stuff up by customer while you're doing the sales order entry or out here while I'm doing the shipping. Okay. But anyway, uh, back to sort of where we were. I've got my pallets here. Everything's packaged up. I'm good. I just need to figure out now which carrier I'm going to use. So to do that, I scan a command that says go out and do my rate shopping for me. And it's going to go out. And now it's in real time, electronically. It's going out based on the information here that I've I've defined. And it's figuring out which carriers can handle this, this freight and what they're going to charge me for it. Okay. And I've got 20 some set up, but I know for this particular address, like some of those carriers are regional and things like that, uh, they won't respond. So it takes a little longer in some cases uh, to do that, um, to get those rates because some carriers aren't gonna respond. But normally in a production environment, it takes less than 10 seconds. So there was maybe 10 seconds to do, it takes less than 10 seconds to do that rate quoting across 
in my case, it, it was like 20 some carriers, right? I've got a whole bunch here. If I open that up, it'll give me the messages, but there's a whole bunch there that are regional or didn't want to take this freight for whatever reason. And if you open that up, it'll tell you why. But here's my rates. So I've got, you know, r &L, they want 2,500. I've got UPS that's, wow, like, you know, really out to lunch. But I've also got this live lane special here. That's a Banyan specific thing. So what that is, it's kind of like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like, um, you know, a, a special that the carriers put on. Maybe they've already got a truck that's going back empty to that location and, and they'll give you a better rate because they, you know, they, they want to do some backhaul or something like that. So using this, right, you look, the, the normal UPS freight is like eight grand to ship this, but I can get it for 368 bucks using this, this Banyan specific live lane special, right? So that's pretty good. Like, I mean, even on RNL here, and again, these rates may not be realistic. This is going off the test server. So, you know, RNL might, if they're listening, that might be, that's like a $200 thing. Well, you know, these rates aren't necessarily realistic in the test environment. But you can see here, you know, these guys want a couple grand. This one's 368 bucks. You can see very quickly how you're also going to be saving a ton of money on your freight as well, right? So Banyan's got some statistics they'll talk about at the end on how much you can actually save by doing this rate shopping and using these these things like this live lane special. Um, but I am gonna choose RNL because you know it's my brother-in-law and I like the guy and it's not my money anyway, so I'm gonna choose that guy. Now, speaking of that, you can, you know, if you want put in rules to, to force us to, you know, force the system to use the cheapest rate and those sorts of things, um, that can be set up as well. But in my case, I'm gonna choose RNL and away we go. By the way, this price that you see here, this, this cost, that's what we're paying. This price, that is uh, what we're charging the customer. So you can set up rules that say, you know what, uh, I'm going to mark it up by 10%, uh, or if the order value is over $10,000, I'm going to you know, give them free shipping or, or whatever it happens to be. So you can set up all of those rules. They're just configuration within Dynamic Ship to decide what you're actually going to charge the customer for freight. Okay. And we can also do third-party billing and things like that. So you know, if you're not charging them for freight, if you're using their account numbers and things like that, we can handle it. One last thing I'll mention on here since I'm I'm still here, this external rate thing that, that comes up here. Let's say there is a carrier that you use like a local carrier like Joe's Hotshot or something like that. And, you know, they're not on the system. They don't have an API. It's one guy with a cell phone, but you want to use them. You can use this external rate entry. This is in standard dynamic ship as well. It allows you to go in and choose that and just specify which carrier you're using, what they're charging you, any tracking information and um and it'll bring it in but again i want to use this live rate that's come back from this carrier this is what they're quoting me and i'm going to use that and what it's going to do as soon as i select that is it's going to go out it's going to generate the bill of material on on the carrier side and it's going to generate the the carrier label and all that kind of stuff that we need for it now rnl is um you know it's pretty basic stuff uh the so first of all it's downloaded the uh, the bill of lading as a as a pdf I can print it here, save it, whatever I like. I can access this again. If I close this, I can get back to this bill of lading anytime I like. But this is the bill of lading, the carrier bill of lading with all of the details. You can see it's it's pretty standard BOL and, and we're good to go. So again, normally I'd print that out or, or whatever. If I don't print that out, I can come back. I'll show you in a sec, get back to it. This is the, the label that they sent back. It's you probably wouldn't use this label. You probably use your your own labeling, the palette labeling and things like that. But this is kind of the the label they want on the on the palettes. But we can print uh, what we call internal package label. That's your own palette labeling. Those types of things. Uh, the carrier label is the one I just showed you. But you can print your own label. For a bill of lading, if you don't like the one that the carrier sent back, this is how I get back to that that carrier bill of lading. By the way, if I click that, it's going to open up the carrier's PDF. But if I don't care about that, or if I want to use my own because I want my own logo on it and all that kind of stuff, there is a bill of lading in Dynamic Ship you can use as well that you can customize. So you can tailor it to have any of the detail uh, that you like. Like I said, you can put your own barcodes on there, your own logos. You can, you know, customize it per uh, per customer, whatever you want to do. And it, you know, it's fairly similar, right? It's just kind of like a VIX bill of lading here, and you've got all that same sort of detail on here. Okay, so um, that is is the nuts and bolts of it. I have now gone out, packaged everything up, um, you know, requested a, a quote for it, and got the bill of lading and everything I need. And the next thing I can do in there, if I like, 
is I can go ahead and uh, schedule uh, the pickup for this uh, particular guy here. And sorry, I, there we go. I can go ahead and schedule the pickup, and that will actually schedule the pickup based on you know the, the pickup date and time and and uh, loading dock number and everything else that I've sent to to the carrier. Okay, so again probably never have to pick up the phone again when you're trying to get your, your freight out the door. Now I'm gonna bring up another one here too, just real quick to illustrate uh, something else that's important. So I package that one up, you know, schedule the pickup, everything else. This one's already all packaged up and everything else. I've already got him set up. And one of the things I wanted to mention here, well, first of all, this is an international shipment. So we're shipping from the, the US into Canada here. And with that, we have to deal with, with customs. So we have the ability to do that as well. If I go in and bring up uh, the commercial invoice information, there's only one item on here, but this would list all the items that I'm going to ship. So this default customs text here, that's just configuration. You can have some default text or you can leave it blank. But if I come in here and you know type in what, what it is I'm shipping, all of the information down at the bottom here, the value, the country of origin, the HS code, all of this kind of stuff is coming out of Business Central. It's coming out of the item master and the, the sales order in this case to bring in the value. So I don't have to type anything in for customs. I don't have to do any of that. All I have to maybe do is, is enter you know, some of this information like a content explanation or if you have different INCO terms or something like that you want to deal with, that's it. And I can print this commercial invoice now, right? Or I can use the carrier's commercial invoice that they generate. So we send all of this information electronically to the carrier and they can use that if they have the facilities to clear customs electronically. Or I can just you know, print the commercial invoice and have a piece of paper that I stick in the, you know, on the pallets, right? So all of that um, uh, custom stuff is handled electronically through dynamic ship. Now one note on that, if you have to file um, you know, AES through, through US customs, um, it's currently not supported, that is coming. Uh, likely by the end of 2022, we'll have AES direct integration. So it'll do the AES filing for you as well if you need to do that type of filing. If there's other documentation you need, you know, your restrict or your shipping restricted items or things like that that needs additional documentation, that's typically going to be handled outside of dynamic ship or be a custom report or something like that that you, you have built for uh, Business Central. Okay. So that's really it. It's it's pretty straightforward. We go in there, build all this stuff out. And, um, and get the rates and, and ship it. Now, when we do that, we do a couple of other things as well. I'm just gonna bring up this guy here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go in and look at uh, the, the source document. So we do a couple of other things when we, um, when we do the shipment. And I'm gonna bring up the sales order that, that's driving this, uh, this shipment. And again, you can have multiple sales orders on the same shipment using the Business Central Warehouse shipment. In this case, I only have the, the one sales order for that shipment. And you'll notice, we added in that, that freight charge onto the sales order automatically. So this is actually what we're charging the customer. This is what we're paying, or in theory, what we've been quoted for that freight, right? And the nice thing is we track this and we can do reporting on it. So we can actually go in and report on how much you're spending on freight, um, you know, where you're spending the most money on freight. So let's give this uh, guy a sec to load. So this is the dynamic ship analysis app you can get off app source for, for Power BI. But I can go in there, I can look by warehouse, by carrier, by customer, all that kind of stuff. I can get my total spend, my total shipment volume, all those sorts of things. And what's also nice is because we track that cost and what, what the customer is being charged, we can tell you if you're making money or losing money on your shipping. So in this case, you know, this Alpine ski house, they're spending a lot of money on freight. We're actually losing money on those guys. We lost 800 bucks on whatever filters we set, like date ranges and all that kind of stuff that you want to set. We can see that we're, we're making or losing money on that, uh, on that shipping uh, from here. And this is by customer, but we can do that any, any way you like. We can do it by, you know, um, carrier or warehouse or potentially even product type or whatever criteria you want to use you can do that type of reporting on you know, what you're doing with your, your freight charges. Okay, so, uh, and then of course, if we go down to the bottom, um, you can see the, the agent that we use, so we know the shipping agent and any tracking information that came back, like bill of lading number, all that kind of stuff, will populate if we have it. 
Uh, and as a side note, if I want to set any of those options, like the LTL options and all those sorts of things here, I can actually go ahead and set that on the sales order before we do the, the rate quoting uh, from the, the package worksheet. The other thing we did when we, when we generated that, when we booked that freight, is we'll send an email to the customer if you like. So we can go out and send an email to the customer saying, yes, your, your freight's on the way. Uh, attach a PDF of the packing slip to it. Attach any tracking information in the email. Attach a copy of the invoice if you like. All that kind of stuff is all automated. We'll send that email with the attachments and, uh, and away you go. Close that off. Um, what else was I going to mention there? I think that's good. All right, last thing uh, that I'll talk about, I think. Oh, no. What I was going to mention was EDI. So if you need to do ASNs for that, you know, you're shipping to Walmart or Lowe's or whatever, um, we have connectors for EDI solutions, or actually more appropriately, the EDI guys have created connectors into Dynamic Ship. So when I process that order, it'll automatically also send the ASN and any other documents required for that. So if you need 753 or an ASN or whatever, those EDI solutions will fire that off. Those are integrated into Dynamic Ship. So we've got your EDI, we've got the email ASN type stuff, uh, all of that sort of thing. And it's all just a side effect of me going beep, beep, beep a few times and, and generating my, my ship. Okay, um, last thing I'll mention, so, well, I lie, it won't be the last. We also have the ability to create those shipping manifests. So I can go in there based on uh, the carrier that I choose. You know, I've got a few in here already. I don't know if any of these guys have stuff on it, but I can generate a manifest uh, for that, that carrier or for a specific shipment or whatever I like. I simply go in there, you know, grab my shipment documents, it'll populate the manifest, and then I can go ahead and, uh, and print that uh, manifest out and um, uh, away we go. And you can use that as a standard manifest document on, uh, uh, on the, the loading dock. Now, uh, the last thing that I'll talk about, see I lied, I told you the last time it was the last thing, this might be the last thing, is talking a little bit about that packaging process. So there I went in and I used, you know, a, a little handheld barcode scanner attached to my PC to say, yeah, I'm building up a pallet and these are the items going on the pallet, all that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes when we're dealing with LTL, that's that's not ideal. We want to actually do the packaging in the staging area, or maybe I want to build up the pallet out there while I'm picking. I don't want to come to another workstation and then, you know, sort of have to scan all that stuff in. A lot of people do that, right? They have the item barcodes on a piece of paper, like on the pecking list and those sorts of things. But another way to do that is using uh, handout scanners. So now we're, we're in Warehouse Insight here. So this little screen is, uh, is the handheld that I have in my hand. Let me just show you what that looks like. So there's the scanner that I have in my hand. Uh, as I touch the screen, you'll see it update. This, by the way, is the little scanner I was using when I was uh, scanning the barcodes into Business Central in the package worksheet. So that's the, the typical thing you would use for that. But this one also allows me to do that same packaging. So I can do that packaging while I'm picking. So I'm driving down the aisle with a forklift, building up a pallet. Well, I could be doing my, my packaging right there, or I can do it at the at the shipping stage. Let me just, oops, hit the wrong icon there. Let me just go into picking and let me show you how one way that can work. So very similar to um, what I did in the package worksheet, where I scan an order and load it up, everything that I need to package. Same thing here, I could have scanned the pick ticket, loads up, you know, the, the items that I need to pick. And at this point, I simply go out and start picking those items, uh, you know, and, and I can drop them off at staging for packaging. Or if I want to build up my pallets from the scanner, I can scan the same barcode that says, hey, I'm, I'm doing a four by four pallet or a three by three pallet or you know, two by two box or whatever it is. I scan a command and it'll start that package on this thing. If I don't have a barcode, I simply come in here and I say start license plate. And what it's going to do is it creates a new package for me, that LP. So in Dynamic Ship, when I was in there, it was a TLP, just a different number series. But LP, the packages, pallets, everything are treated as what we call license plates. So now everything I pick is going to go on this particular pallet, this package. And when I get into Dynamic Ship, everything for that order is already going to be packaged up. And all I have to do is do my rate shopping, print my bill of lading, do whatever I need at that point. So from here, basically what I would do, you know, I won't go through the full demo of um, uh, Warehouse Insight, but I scan the bin to indicate the bin that I'm picking from, 
and then I'm going to scan the item that I'm picking from that particular bin will be this guy here and what it's going to do uh, I can show you a picture stuff if you're interested in in what warehouse insight can do by the way you know feel free to um, uh, watch the online video and that sort of thing but that's basically it that's I've just picked that item so pick that you know 1996-s it's put that 12 into business central and it's added it to this particular palette so I just scan everything in my palette is defined I get into dynamic ship I do my rate shop, I print my bill of lading, and I'm done. So we can do packaging from the handheld device, or we can do packaging from within dynamic ship using that package worksheet. And we actually do have some customers that just run this on a tablet, right? So they um, they load this screen up on a tablet using the Business Central app, and you know either have Bluetooth or a, a wired little scanner like the one I showed you, and they go around and they're still mobile, scanning everything in, and they don't need the, the WMS, the Warehouse Insight solution to, to do that. All right, so hopefully that kind of covered off a lot of the questions. I haven't been keeping an eye on what's been coming in, um, but that is all I'm gonna cover right now for, for the demo. So the next thing, they're going, wow, that was awesome, even though it didn't cover everything I wanted to see, but I still want it, how do I get it? Well, the way dynamic ship is priced is per shipping location. So if you have two warehouses, you're going to need two licenses for dynamic ship. Good news is after the first uh, location, subsequent locations are cheaper, and it's not exactly a lot of money, to be honest. You can contact your partner uh, to, to get that, that pricing, or if you're a partner, you can download the price list uh, from our, our partner site. Um, but it's not a lot of money. And it's not user-based, so if you have 20 packing stations or you know 10 guys doing packaging or using the system or rate shopping, it's, it's not you know, user-based uh, pricing, it's just per location. Um, then for the Banyan service, so to go out and get that live lane stuff and, and you know, the LTL rate shopping, everything else, you'll connect with Banyan, they'll help you through, figure out you know, what services you need, you know, what that cost is gonna be, those sorts of things. So it's not a one size fits all, they're not gonna say, yeah, it's 50 bucks a month or 500 bucks a month, whatever it is, they're gonna talk to you and figure out what you need and get you a, a price on that. And then finally, the implementation. So, of course, you need dynamic ship installed. Uh, typically, the partners, your, your partner is going to do that. If not, we have a fixed price implementation. But on top of that implementation cost, to install that LTL connector, so the, the freight integration provider for Banyan, into dynamic ship, there's usually about a day or so of work to get that LTL connector set up and working and talking to Banyan and getting your rates back and everything else. So there might be a day or two of additional uh, effort on the implementation, but that's it. That's all there is to it, right? So you plug in dynamic ship of app source, or if you're on-prem, you can get it from your partner, plug it in a few minutes to set up the basic stuff. Then we come in, plug in the LTL connector, you get set up on Banyan and bang, you are rate shopping, dispatching, doing all of that kind of stuff electronically and not having to pick up the phone to talk to your uh, customer or anything else or your, your carrier or anything else. All right, so, and your customer too, because again, when you do this, we email the customer automatically. So you don't have to worry about them phoning you every day, where is my stuff? You know, you sent them the email, it's got the tracking information, everything else in there if you like, and, and you're good. So, I mean, this saves you a ton of time. And then with the Banyan integration, the ability to rate shop is probably gonna save you a ton of money on your shipping as well. All right, as a segue, talking about Banyan, I'm gonna hand it over to Alan uh, from Banyan. He's gonna walk you through uh, a little bit on their um, on their platform and, and what they can do for you. Oops. All right, so over to you, Alan. Thank you very much, Mark, I appreciate it. Lots of great questions coming in, guys. Let me just give you a very brief overview of Banyan, um, and I'll try to keep it as brief as as Mark did with his. Uh, Banyan is an API connectivity platform to uh, LTL carriers, truckload, local carriers, so forth and so on. We connect to 300 LTL carriers via the dynamic ship app, 140 of them are API. We have some EDI connections and then we can connect to a couple via uh, tariff rate tables, okay? The APIs are all live in real time. That's the important thing. I see a bunch of these questions here about uh, the Banyan rates versus your contracted rates. What I want to make clear is we're a connectivity tool. We don't hold rates at Banyan. So if you have contracted rates, all we need to know is the carriers you have 
and uh, your account numbers. And we pull back your rates when we do our rate shopping. Uh, typically, people save north of 10% when they begin to use rate shopping through us. A lot of that depends upon volume and what you're shopping and scheduling. We do a pretty good job of covering North America, okay, which is where we are. I saw some questions about does this work in the UK, et cetera. This is a North American application, and we do quite a bit uh, a load per month. It's, it, uh, we have a good volume there. If you want to slick, go to the next slide, uh, Mark. This will be real quick. You can look at pictures. But it shows there as we do a variety of things. We work with shippers directly. We work with third-party logistics companies. We're often the uh, connectivity source behind other pieces of technology. But we work with everyone from uh, the small to medium-sized companies all the way up to the large and enterprise. So why don't we go to the next slide? And I think this is where I'm going to end it before we go in. But there's a picture of Andrew Larson. Andrew's on the call today. Andrew's the account executive at Bannon that uh, works directly with all the Insight Works dynamic ship opportunities. Uh, he's very easy to get to. There's his contact information. We also have a little landing page there, the info dot bannon technology dot com slash insight works you can go there and just fill out a form if you'd like to we'll be able to give you a holler and talk to you about what you're looking to do and see if what we do uh in partnership with insight works and dynamic ship uh will work for you um so i think i wanted to keep it to those three there's so many questions here available uh i think we're done aren't we mark on on my slides that is that is it yes absolutely so but if you need more immediate information, you can go to shippingfordynamics.com or if you go to our main website, look under apps, and then the Dynamic Ship Banyan LTL app uh, will, will show up and uh, get you some information. And uh, you know, clearly, I visited this link. And if you go to the, uh, uh, the Banyan site, it'll have some information there as well. But feel free to use our website chat or email us directly uh, if you have our... our uh, uh, info well basically you can get a, a hold of us on on the website all right thanks everybody i appreciate uh, you all attending and hopefully we'll be talking again soon hey thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel for more great content